this video, we are going to be going over the steps to create a self-graded quiz using Google Forms and the Fluberoo add-on. What this will do is create a quiz that you can embed or share via a hyperlink to your students. They will take the quiz, submit it, and all the results will be gathered on a spreadsheet which can then be graded using the Fluberoo add-on. This add-on will both grade for correct answers, it will also itemize your results so that you can see an item analysis of each question along with grades for your students. So to get started we're going to create the quiz. Now to create a quiz you're going to go to create in your Google Drive and click form. I'm going to just pick the default form and I'm going to name it sample quiz and click OK and I'm going to end up at the Google Forms page. Once I'm in the Google Forms editing area, I'm going to first go to the form settings and check off automatically collect respondents Queensbury School District username and this will automatically check require Queensbury School District login to view this form. What this does is makes the user log into their Google account and it collects this email account so that you can both email results back to the student afterwards but it also gives you the ability to see who was logged in when they finished a quiz. If it was generic you could then have a student just writing any name they want and you wouldn't know who submitted it. So this will show you the Google account that was used to submit a quiz. Now once I have this done I'm going to look at the page one of one section of my Google form. This is where I can begin my quiz. Now the first step of every Google quiz I'm going to create is going to be to include a place for students to enter their name and whatever period they're in. For some reason with the Google form spreadsheets if you add the names later on and then move them to the top because you can rearrange your questions on the final spreadsheet that holds your data it somehow locks in to the original layout of the questions so that if you don't have the name at the top they can end up having the name column somewhere else on your spreadsheet which can be kind of confusing. So I'm going to start with a question title and I'm going to name this one first name and I'm going to make this not multiple choice I'm going to have a text question and make it a required question and click done. I'm then going to click add item and add another question which is going to be last name. I'm going to make that required. Click done. This is just like the top of any quiz I would hand out to my students. I would collect their names. Now I'm also going to add another choice which is going to be choose from a list and this is going to be what class they're in. Are they in period 2? period 4 or I'll go with period 7. Now you would type in whatever classes you have so that a student could come to your website, sign into this quiz, and then choose what class they're a part of. This will help you later on if you want to sort through your data. You'll be able to group them by classes. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to make that required and click done. Now I have the very beginning stage of my quiz. I have kind of where I'm going to gather the information. Now the username is going to be gathered so I don't have to put a spot for an email address or anything like that. I can actually get into my quiz and start adding some questions. Now when I want to add a question for this type of quiz I need to keep in mind that the results are going to be graded according to an answer key that I'm going to submit by filling out the quiz I create here. So basically what happens is I create the quiz and then I'm going to take it myself and put in whatever answers I want to show up as the correct answers in my answer key. Now if I'm using multiple choice that's very easy because students will have to pick multiple choice questions and if they don't pick the right answer they're gonna get it wrong. Now if I use any text based questions students will have to get that text exactly correct. So if it's a fill in answer they would have to match the exact thing that I typed in my answer key. So I kind of avoid that with this tool but if it was a vocabulary word or something that had to be spelled correctly that would be okay. So I'm going to begin with a question. I'm going to add an item. So my question is going to be what substance does the abbreviation H2O represent? Now I'm going to choose not from a list but I have multiple choices and I'm going to type in dirt, water, air, fire. 
Make a very easy question. I'm going to click required question so that everyone has to answer this before they can submit it. And I'm going to click done. It is not necessary for me to notify the program which is the correct answer because I'm going to be doing that when I submit my answer key. Follow up with my next question. Which of the following is not a metal? And I'm going to add iron, gold, carbon, or And as I go through, I'm adding questions. Now I made a mistake here on this question and I chose select from a list, which is not how I want this to be. So what I can do is at any time I click on the question and I have the editing choices open so I can come in here, click multiple choice and I click done and it fixes the question so that it looks like the way I want it to look. Now one of the things that you're able to do with the quiz is you're able to actually have page breaks so that you can have students fill out a certain section and then when that's complete it'll go to the next section. I like to use this for the quizzes because it allows you to separate the quiz kind of into pages like you would on paper. Now I'm going to add an item and I'm going to add a page break. I'm going to name this page 2 and click done. I'm on page two, and I'm going to make my question a little bit different. I'm going to add a picture to this question. I would like this question to be based on a certain diagram. I can make a couple questions that go along with this. So if you have a picture that you want to use, that's going to work great. So I'm going to find a water cycle picture. Just going to go onto Google and do an image search and find the image that I would like. So if I find a picture that looks good, I like this picture here, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to view the image so I can see the actual picture. That's a large picture, so that's going to be nice. It's going to be uh, easy to read as it gets resized into my form. So I'm going to right click on that link, copy it, and I go back to my quiz. I'm now going to add an item. Now when I'm in the item area, I'm going to go over here to image. If I add an image, I can choose to add it by URL. And there's the picture, I click select, and it's going to add it to page two of my document. And this is going to be image title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give directions as I use the, the picture below for the next two questions. And I can be click done. That will add it as part of page two. I can add an item, another multiple choice question. I can now ask a, my first multiple choice question based on this diagram. And I can say, which process is responsible for water leaving lakes and oceans and rising into the air? And as I look at the diagram, some of the choices up there are going to be evaporation, runoff, condensation, precipitation. I'm going to make that mandatory, click done, and add one more question, multiple choice, which process is responsible for water leaving plants and entering the atmosphere. I'm going to add that one. Required, click done. Now I've added the last question for this form. Um, when you're creating your test, you can add more questions if you'd like. You can have less. It is up to you. I can do, do numerous pages with questions that have pictures and questions that relate to those pictures. So it's a great tool to create an interactive activity with your students. When I'm done, I'm going to go down to the very bottom and look at this confirmation page. This is going to be the, what pops up when students submit their work. 
I'm going to add something that says, great job, check your email to see how you did. Because I'm going to set this up so that when a student takes this quiz, they are going to get an email with their results. It's going to grade it for them and show them which questions they got right and which ones they got wrong. When I'm done with the quiz, I need to create the spreadsheet that will show where my responses are going. So if I click View Responses, it's going to create a spreadsheet with all the different questions that I've put in here. What's nice about this, this spreadsheet is going to capture all of my results, so I only have to come to one place to look at it. This is also where we'll be using the Flubaroo add-on to do the grading for us. So before we do the Flubaroo add-on, we need to come to our quiz and take it. Now if I would like to share this form, I can hit send form up here and add email addresses to directly send it to someone or I can grab this link and post this on my website or I can e send it out on an email. I would post it on my website in a place that my students know where to find it so that when it's time to take the quiz they know where to look, they can take it and it would be very easy for me to remove later on if I want to kind of close off the quiz. But I'm going to click done here for now and I'm going to click view live form. When I do that, it shows me what my form looks like when a student would see it. Now if I look, there's my first page of questions. I have to answer this before I can click continue. Now I'm going to create an answer key for my quiz. So I'm going to name first name, answer, second name, key, class, doesn't really matter which one I put it in. I'm going to click all the right answers. Click continue. Here's the picture shows up on my quiz. I'm going to pick the right answers for that. And I'm going to click Submit. If I go back to the spreadsheet, I'm going to see there's my submission I just made. There's my correct answers. It's named Answer Key. I can see the username. Now I'm going to go back to this link. I'm going to do this quiz again. I'm going to do this as myself. And I'm going to be period four, and I'm going to pretend I didn't study, and I'm going to miss a couple questions. So I'm going to get some of them right, some of them wrong. So out of pride, I'm not going to let myself get more than one question wrong. I'm going to click Submit. I'm now going to enter this one as another person. So John Smith has come in and taken it. He has not studied at all. And as I go through, he's going to have some trouble with his quiz. Now I'm going to do one more and have Jane Doe come in. She's going to be in period four and she's going to come in and do relatively well. She's just going to miss a different question than the one I missed. Just to kind of show you what happens. And Now as I go to my results I see that I have a number of people who have turned in their assignments. Now if I was looking at this and thinking this was my class and I noticed the username was the same for everyone, I would be suspicious. But since I am submitting these, it is, it's expected that all the usernames are going to be my account. But your class, when you look at your results, should show up as each username should match up with whoever submitted their um, results. So once I have this information, I need to do something with it. Now what's nice, it's, it's all right here. I can look really quickly and kind of see my answers. But by using the Fluber app, it's going to give me a much better kind of breakdown of this results. If I go to add-ons and I see Flubaroo here, that means I've already added the Flubaroo add-on. If you have not and you don't see Flubaroo here, you need to go to get add-ons and click it and search for an icon that looks like this, Flubaroo with the apple with the smiley face. It might not be located right here, it might be farther down the gallery, they kind of rotate these tools around, but you would click on this and you would click on use you know, I have managed because I already have it added, but if you click on one that you have not added, it's going to ask you if you want to use it or add it. And you're going to click that to do it. Now, once I have Flubaroo installed, I'm going to click Flubaroo. And for this one, I want to grade my assignment. So I'm going to click that, and Flubaroo is going to come in and say, okay, let's grade your assignment. It's going to ask me, well, what are the different questions you have? Well, these are First questions, I'll identify the student. The first name, username, last name, and the class. Those are not things that are being graded. So I'm going to select that. 
I can look at my next questions and it asks, asks me how much do you want to attribute to each question. I can choose up to one to five points. Mm -hmm. I can choose to have it skipped altogether. And what's great about this is it allows you to wait questions. So if you wanted to, you can say, you know what, I want this question to be two points, this question to be two points. So those two questions will be weighted more than the others. And it will apply that as you grade it. I'm going to click continue. And it's going to ask me the next step. It shows me all the different results there. And it asks me, well, which one do you want to use as your answer key? This is where it's nice when you've named one of them answer key so it's very easy to find. I'm going to click that, click continue, and Fluberoo is going to make a new spreadsheet, or a new sheet that's a part of my spreadsheet, and it says okay, it's completed the grading, I'm going to click view grades, and here's the breakdown of my assignments. I see each person, I see what their grade was. I see which questions they got wrong. I can see which question was the most missed. I can see the breakdown of who missed what. Very helpful. If I want to see my original data, it's under here, student submissions, shows me your raw data, and it shows you your grades. Now, if at any point you get more data coming in, you just have to come into the add ons, Fluberoo, and regrade an assignment, and it will update whatever you've done. What's nice about these grades is you can then have the person notified via email of what they've, you know, how they did. So if I click add ons and go to Fluberoo, one of my choices is email grades. So I can have this set up. It's not going to be automatic as soon as a student finishes it. What I can do is then decide, all right, everybody's in. I'm going to click email grades and they're going to get them. Now when I look at this, it's saying email address question. I have to find out where their email address is going to be, and that's going to be under username. I usually click includes an answer key, and then it has a message box to include in your email. I can say here are your results. And click continue. and it shows that those four grades were successfully emailed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click OK. I can then go to my email and find an email with my grades. Now as a teacher it gives me a list of the different submissions but since I signed in as every student it's going to send me separate emails but this is what each student would receive mm -hmm. their name. Mm -hmm. It would show them what they got correct, what they got incorrect, and since I checked off the answer key, it shows what the right answers were. So you're giving some your kids instant feedback. Now, they not only get their feedback, but you have data right here where you can very easily come in here and take a look at your percentages, look at your grades. You can immediately add these to your grade book, or you can use these to calculate goals and things like that, show progress, but it's very easy. So this is how we use Fluberoo to calculate your grades when you create a quiz in Google Forms.